This is going to be Revelation chapter 21. And we're going to look at heathen's paradise versus God's paradise. The lost world has their own version of what they would consider paradise. But if you're saved, then your paradise is what God describes about the millennial reign and heaven and eternity with Him. But let's look at heathen's paradise versus God's paradise in Revelation 21. And first we're going to look at no new thing versus all things new. In heathen's paradise, there's no new thing. But in God's paradise, all things are new. Revelation 21, 1 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. In the book of Ecclesiastes, in chapter 1 and verse 9, it says, There is no new thing under the sun. But yet there is going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Jesus Christ is the only one with the power to truly make things new. On this present earth that we live in now, there is nothing that is truly new. Even though people go around desiring to either tell or hear some new thing, like the people in Acts 17.21, and they are constantly refreshing their news feed, uh, they want the newest devices, the newest basketball shoes, the newest clothes. Uh, they care more about what is trending. That's That word is very popular right now, trending. And however, this world only gives something that is old and repackaged. And if you go into the winning side of eternity, if you go into heaven, then you're going to finally see something that's really new. Revelation 21 5 says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. In eternity, God is going to get back to the original plan. The original plan fell through when man sinned. It wasn't that God didn't know that man was going to sin. He knew man was going to sin from the beginning. But God gives man a choice. He, ha he gives them a free will. So God knew something wasn't going to work, but he did it anyway. I can't explain why. That's just how God works. He gives man free will to choose. He doesn't want man to just love him and be programmed to do so like a robot. But the original plan is for us to live with Jesus Christ for all eternity in fellowship with nothing coming between us. And this will be a sinless place. 2 Peter 3.13 says, Nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. And Revelation 21.1 says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And the sea could be the one above our heads, as Psalms 148 says, Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. And this could be done away with because nothing will be separating God from his creation anymore. But number two, heathen's paradise is sin city, while God's paradise is a holy city. Revelation 21 2 says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And New Jerusalem is going to be the home of every born-again believer. This is where we will get, a, we'll get our mansion. As Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. Notice it is New Jerusalem, because He makes all things new. And we can't doubt the connection of New Jerusalem to the body of Christ. Galatians 4.26 says, But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. This is a holy city. The heathen desire a paradise or place where they can fornicate and gamble and drink and do drugs and live like the devil. The righteous, however, will live in a place of righteousness. The holy city is much better than sin city because the pleasures of sin only last for a season, but New Jerusalem is eternal. It won't be destroyed. It can't be judged for sin because there is no sin. And the Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. 
New Jerusalem won't forget God. It comes down from God out of heaven. So you definitely won't be able to say, I never got anything from God. It came down from God out of heaven. And if you go to New Jerusalem, you're getting a city with a mansion, with no crime, with no abortion, no sex trafficking, no pornography, no death, no crying in the streets. And the things that take place in Sin City lead to death and sorrow. The holy city is the exact opposite. Revelation 21, 4 says, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. New Jerusalem is for the bride of Christ. So this city is associated with a bride, just like the great whore, Satan's bride, is associated with Babylon. Revelation 21, 2 through 3 says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. On earth the tabernacle will be for the Jews. Any believing Jew who is saved, yet wasn't in the body of Christ, will dwell on earth not New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is for the body of Christ, the church, all born-again believers. But God himself shall be with them and be their God. No matter where you are in eternity, whether you're in New Jerusalem, on earth, uh, populating the heavens, God will be there and you will have complete fellowship with him. God is everywhere at once, so maybe he will show himself everywhere at once. The presence of God will be felt way more than you feel it now. And nothing can get in that will corrupt the world like Satan did with Eve. Uh, Revelation twenty one twenty seven says, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Satan lied in Genesis 3, but nothing is entering in that maketh a lie. History finally won't repeat itself. But number three, heathen's paradise has the God of this world for a king, while God's paradise has the king of kings. Heathen's paradise has Satan, the God of this world, as their ruler. We will have the king of kings and lord of lords for a ruler. Revelation 21, 5 says, And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Jesus Christ is the one on the throne, and no one can take his throne. No one can vote him out, and you won't ever have to vote him back in. He has completely taken over. So John is seeing Jesus Christ on the throne in eternity in the future, and God allowed John to see things that hadn't even happened yet. And it makes you wonder if John saw his future self in eternity. Or if John's future self saw his old self talking to Jesus Christ in eternity. Uh, God has the ability to pick anyone up in time and put them forward in time or out into eternity. Jesus Christ is the living water. And Revelation 21, 6 says, And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. You take it freely. And God's paradise has water. Hell has no water. You will beg for a drop of water on your tongue like the rich man did in Luke chapter 16. Revelation 21, 7 says, He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. The king of kings that will rule over God's paradise is God himself. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The God of the heathen paradise had a beginning. Jesus Christ formed the crooked serpent. Lucifer was created, and he also has an ending. Satan will be cast into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet are. The God of this world, the God of the heathen paradise, has a beginning and an ending. Jesus Christ is Alpha and Omega, and he had no beginning and has no ending. The false god of this world will end up in the same place as every false god ever, cre ever created. And number four, heathen's paradise leads to death, 
while God's paradise is eternal life. Revelation 21 8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And the second death is when you are cast into the lake of fire. The fantasy and the filthy dream of the heathen is to murder, get away with it, commit fornication, get away with it, do witchcraft, get away with it, worship idols and make a lie and get away with it, and do every abomination against God's book without having a final authority to answer to other than themselves. The pleasures of sin only last for a season. She that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth, and these things lead to death. So they won't be allowed or come into the paradise of God. They can't pass through God's paradise. Revelation 21, 4 says, There shall be no more death. No one is going to die in God's eternal paradise. But in today's world, they do. The heathen's paradise or the fantasy paradise of every atheist, in it people die daily. And they want to get out of dying. That is why they are going to try and make themselves immortal through transhumanism. That is the godless atheist dream, to live forever in a robotic-like body, fornicating, sinning, eating, drinking, killing people who do, they don't think is as good as they are, eating, drinking, and being merry. They want eternal life without God being present. They want to live all eternity in their sinful state, and that would be catastrophic. That is why God put cherubims to keep the way of the tree of life so that humans couldn't get in there and eat the fruit and live forever in their sinful state. Who wants to live eternity as a sinner? But number five, heathen's paradise is darkness. God's paradise is light. If you desire the heathen paradise, then you desire to walk in darkness. You want to be led by the blind, then continue in he the heathen paradise. If you want to walk in the light, then get born again and enter into God's paradise one day. If the blind lead the blind, they'll both fall into the ditch. And if you listen to Bill Maher and all these other atheists, if you watch shows by the Seth McFlaren guy, however you say his name, who disrespects Jesus Christ in the Bible, then you're being led by the blind. If you want God's paradise, then you will walk in the light. If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. If you're born again, then one day you're going to walk in the light with Jesus Christ. Revelation 21, 9 through 10 says, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. And Hebrews twelve twenty two talks about this. It says, But ye are coming to Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. So there's a heavenly Jerusalem, a holy Jerusalem. Revelation 21.11 says, Having the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone clear as crystal. The things in this city are things of royalty. And when you enter New Jerusalem, you're going into a place of light. It will be so holy and pure that the light won't reveal anything that's dirty. And there won't be anything that defileth. Going into New Jerusalem is entering the glory of God. John eight twelve says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. God's paradise is so full of light that there will be no night there. And bad things happen at night in the heathen paradise, but God's paradise won't even have a night time. There will be no bedtime. There will be nothing going bump in the night or nighttime prowlers. Uh, they just caught the original Night Stalker, also known as the East Area Rapist or the Golden State Killer. Notice he is called 
the original Night Stalker. But you aren't going to have people breaking in your house and raping you in God's paradise. That type of thing belongs in the heathen paradise where people do what they want to do and don't want the consequences for their sin. And that is the fantasy of every sinful man. If every sinful man could live out their fantasy, you wouldn't be safe in your own home. You wouldn't be safe to walk down the street. Being able to do what you want without getting caught is the fantasy of the lost, dirty, old, sinful man. And that's what heathen's paradise is. That's what tri the tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble would be like. That's the paradise for the heathen. Where the Christians are took out in a rapture. There's not as many of God's people running around teaching the Bible, preaching the Bible, standing up for what's right. I mean, there's still going to be God's people there. The two witnesses are going to be there and the 144,000. But there's going to be a lot less light than there is now. So you better get saved now before you enter into a time like that. Revelation 21, 23 through 25 says, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the kings of it shall not be shut at all by day. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And John saw all these things before he died. John, without a doubt, is one of the luckiest men in the Bible. He saw more of the future than anyone else, it seems. And Revelation 21.10 says, He carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain. He is always getting carried away by the Spirit. And this is what happened in chapter 1 when he said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. This doesn't mean he was full of the Holy Ghost on Saturday or in church on Sunday. It is talking about him being carried away in the Spirit to the day of the Lord, the Lord's day. And this is what you get comparing Scripture with Scripture. The same thing happened, happened to Philip in Acts chapter 8 when it talks about, he, it says it caught him away. That's what happened to John. He's caught away by the Spirit. It happened to Ezekiel in Ezekiel 37, 1. But Revelation 21, 12 says, and had a, a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Yet God's done with Israel, as some people say. If God's so done with Israel, uh, why are these names of the twelve tribes written on these twelve gates? Uh, so it has a wall. And it's obviously not to keep anyone out. God is promising a wall. But it's just for looks. Because there's not going to be anyone prowling and breaking into your mansion. And going to come in and rape you while you sleep. You don't have to lock your doors anymore. Revelation 21.14 says, On the wall of the city had twelve foundations. And in them the names of twelve apostles of the Lamb. Why the apostles? Well, they did a lot of suffering for Jesus Christ, so they really made a name for themselves. And Proverbs 22, 1 says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver and gold. And Revelation 21, 17 and 18 says, And he measured the wall thereof an hundred and forty and four cubits according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. This city is going to be nothing like anything on this planet that you or anyone else has ever seen. And men like the outward appearance of things. This city is not only going to be good outwardly, but it will have people in it who are beautiful inwardly. It is perfect paradise. The heathen paradise looks good on the outside many times, but it doesn't stay that way. And the people in the heathen's paradise are wicked on the inside and desire only selfish things. They don't care about you or your family or your kids or anyone else. Revelation 21.12 says, And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, 
which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Okay, so Satan will be in the lake of fire. The unclean spirits will be in the lake of fire. God will be visible to you, and you have a great wall surrounding you in New Jerusalem, and then you have angels at the gates. So how much more safe can you be? You will no longer have to lock your doors or worry about anything dangerous anymore. The gates will have the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. And Revelation 21.13 says, On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. Both sides of eternity have gates. Jesus Christ talks about the gates of hell in Matthew 16.18, but New Jerusalem has gates also. So twelve gates with its own angel for each one. The gates are never shut. God isn't worried about who comes in or out. Revelation twenty one twenty five says, And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. Then Revelation twenty one fourteen through 16 says, And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed, to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof, and the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs, the length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. So New Jerusalem is shaped like a cube with the length, breadth, and height, each measuring twelve thousand furlongs, fifteen hundred miles. Revelation twenty one seventeen says, And he measured the wall thereof, an hundred and forty and four cubits, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And this is a great verse to show angels aren't sexless. They are male. Hebrews thirteen two says, You can entertain them unaware. And this is because they look so much like men, not winged creatures. Uh, Revelation twenty one eighteen says, And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. It goes back to the way it looked during the Garden of Eden, but probably way better. And the city will be pure gold. And this seems to be what the cities were like during Garden of Eden times. Because if you look at Genesis two ten and 11, it talks about the land of Havilah, where there is gold. Uh, Revelation twenty one nineteen says, And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third a chalcedony, chalcedony, the fourth an emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, chrysolite the eighth beryl, the ninth a topaz, the tenth a chrysophrysis, the eleventh a jacinth, the twelfth an amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. So these gates really are pearly gates. Because it says, and the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. So that's a real, you hear people talking about the pearly gates all the time, that's really in the Bible. Revelation twenty one twenty two says, And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the body of Christ is the temple. Ephesians two nineteen through 21 says, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the body and whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. So if you are a born again believer, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And in the Bible, God has a physical temple for the Jew. And when it comes to the church, he has his people for the temple. So there's a difference there. But if you choose the right side of eternity, you choose light instead of darkness. Revelation twenty one twenty three says, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Remember back in Genesis how God made the sun to be the greater light to rule the day, and the moon was the lesser light to rule the night. 
These lights are not needed because God is the light thereof. And there will be nothing separating God's creation from the light of His glory. The sun and moon will probably still be there, but we won't need them. We, all we need is God's light. Revelation twenty one twenty four says, And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring the glory and honor into it. Notice the phrase, walk in the light. 1 John 1, 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. And there will be perfect fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ and with everyone else. Preachers who were at enmity with other preachers will fellowship with each other during this time. Angry, backbiting women will no longer backbite their brothers and sisters in Christ. Everyone will be in one accord in perfect harmony. And the verse said, And the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. The rulers of this world will be right with God for once. If you have read the Old Testament and read how the kings were wicked and provoked the Lord to anger, and how the rulers of this world have set themselves against the Lord and His anointed, then you know how wicked the rulers of this world are and always have been. Imagine not having a person in leadership who is for Planned Parenthood or homosexuality or feminism or satanic music or wanting more and more power or for anything that's against Jesus Christ or rulers in connection with the spirits of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. But imagine having rulers and people reigning that love the Lord Jesus Christ, want to serve Jesus Christ, and aren't influenced by spiritual wickedness in high places. Revelation twenty one twenty five says, And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. You won't need night lights floodlights or security systems the scary people many times come out at night go to walmart at 3 a.m if you don't know what i mean but there won't be any wicked people and there won't be any nighttime or bedtime if you're su suffering from night terrors you won't have this problem in eternity if you're saved however if you end up in the smoking section of eternity you will live out those night terrors in eternity in new jerusalem the gates won't be shut. You can go out and explore outside of it. Nothing is getting in that shouldn't be. And then Revelation 21, 26 and 27 says, And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. And there shall be in no wise enter, it, enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh of a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. The only people you're going to see in New Jerusalem is people you know, people who you know are good and have your best interest at heart. There's not going to be all these wicked people walking around who want to rape your wife, kidnap your kid, take everything you have. It's going to be a perfect paradise. So what do you want to choose? Heathen's paradise or God's paradise? If you want to make sure that you're going to God's paradise, then you need to be sure you have believed the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4. And Paul says and tells us about how Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and how he is buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus Christ died for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day. And if you want to be saved, you need to put your faith and trust in that to get you to heaven. Quit relying on being a good person to get you to heaven. That's not what gets you to heaven. The Bible says we're not saved by our works. In Romans 4, 5, it says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you want to be saved, come to Jesus Christ as the guilty sinner that you are, and believe on Him to be your payment for those sins. And only through that way can you have eternal life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life.